So guys, it's time to check out what the science is behind the general engineering, especially for a chemical engineer. So if you haven't checked out, this is a video series. Check out for the playlist, which I think this is video number three. And I'm explaining the syllabus of a chemical engineer. We are right now in sciences. What type of sciences do we study? The most common one is physics and biology, and of course chemistry. But since chemistry is very important for us chemical engineers, I'm going to leave that into my next video. So what about physics and biology? Actually, I think many chemical engineers hate biology or they think it's not useful. But you don't know when you're going to use this term, for instance, in enzymes. When do you use it? What's an enzyme? And so on. And I actually hate it when people say, what's an enzyme? We are in a maybe chemical reactor study or homework or project and they tell me hey what's this enzyme and you're like dude seriously enzyme is just a catalyst and what's a catalyst something that increases the rate of reaction and what's a reaction something that happens with chemicals so of course we need to pay attention into enzymes or at least maybe i don't know maybe you are talking about cells animal cells and plant cells and you're talking about serum or maybe you found this chlorophyll that you are synthesizing and chlorophyll of course it's biology but of course is a chemical so if you are talking about something that is about biology well you need to pay attention because biology is eventually chemistry then there's a trend right now and I really saw it especially in the European universities not that much in all other universities but they talk about a lot of the environment and they have maybe even not only one class or subject they have like even one course or specialization on environmental engineering and so on this is about pollution the environment how to take care of the air water soil and essentially well the most important one i think is the co2 methane the global warming stuff how we pollute water with plastics, maybe even mercury or lead, how we are depleting our soils when we don't use some, for example, uh, fertilizers and so on. So that's what you probably see about biology, something about life, something about the environment. And yeah, that's very generic courses, I would say. Of course, you need to know, for instance, they tell you, how do you produce NOx? And you're like, dude, I don't know. And you're Surely, you don't know what's NOx. Well, it's all the nitrogen oxides that are being produced when combustion happens. And combustion sounds something engineering and chemical. Yes, it is. And what happens? Well, when you come, you, when you burn up a fuel, you produce pollution almost by definition. So yes, it's important. Now, physics. Probably, if you like chemistry, you will like physics because they are very interconnected. Once you understand the physics, you will understand a little bit on chemistry and backwards. So, first thing you will see on physics are velocity, acceleration, eventually we go to force, we start doing some free body diagrams, the Newton's law of motion, we start getting this concept of friction, which is very important, especially in momentum transport, or pumping and frictions and efficiencies and so on. Then we start getting the concept of pressure and temperature, which is very, very important. But here it's not that important. You just get to know what's pressure, which is force over area and temperature. You see it as a something that is heat, which is not. But for this time, it's OK. Then if you're lucky, you will start seeing a little bit on hydrostatics and fluid dynamics or mechanics essentially how fluids move. So if you're talking about barometer, how it works, why do stuff goes oil and water, why do they separate? And I saw it, I did have electricity and magnetism in one course in my university, but I saw plenty of universities that don't analyze this much. And what I see or I think they did is electricity went to maybe electrochemistry course, or magnetism went to physics tree and so on. So that's what I wanted to show you on the physics and biology part. Physics, well, of course you're going to you will going to start maybe with physics one, 
then go physics 2 and as I told you eventually this is going to convert into more specific fluid dynamics and fluid statics so this is when fluids are stand down they're not moving so for instance if you have a tank well and you, you have it full well you need to know that the pressure right here is going to be higher than the pressure right here and why do we need to know that because maybe then we can destroy the tank and as engineers we don't like working in hazardous or dangerous places so that would be a nice idea if we actually understand why pressure is higher here fluid dynamics Essentially, why do we need pumps? Why do we need to move fluids? Why do we lose friction? Why do we compress? And so on. And eventually, other type of physics related you will see later is heat transfer. Heat transfer, how I love it. It's essentially how heat travels, conduction, and we will see this later. But the beautiful equation you've seen so far well it's only valid on some cases but you will see that later on the physics we are interested is in force Newton's law movement and so on pressures maybe basic heat basic electricity and so on and uh, yeah we're going to the next one which is chemistry let me show it in another video <laughs>